What's going on, my comrades? It's your boy, Frank and the Furious, bringing you some more Milwaukee Dreadnoughts. NHL 20 Franchise Mode, Expansion Mode. Uh, more words. Let's add more words onto this. This episode, we're going to go through the trade deadline. And we are also uh, going to finish out the season. Will we start playoffs? I don't know. But right now, I actually want to get started in a contract extension. There's a player I would really like to keep around because he's playing very well. Where he is, and that is Jared McCann. But yeah, 34 points in 54 games. If he can hit 50 this season, I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. And McCann, well, he wants fair value. So I want to give him five years. I might just give him that 4.25. I don't see that being an issue. He continues to be putting up 55, 60 points. If he can do that, that is a fair value contract I'm happy with. Up next, good old Oscar Limblom, who I also want to sign. Uh, Limblom, I wanted to give... Uh, what did I want to give him? Did I want to give you a long-term deal? I don't know. We're actually going off this from the start now. Off the top of my head. So, that's value for Limblom. Maybe get six years. Uh, yeah, that is a lot of money. Not doing good. Nah. Hard to give you six years for four point. For four point three five. You take that. But yeah, that's all the main signings I want. Eh, you know, what does Jacob Larson want right now? Okay, I'll give you a 1.05 for the next two seasons. He's probably going to slot into the roster. I don't know where. I might make a trade. Because, uh, yeah, all these Stefan Johns. Dude has been fire with Geo. I don't know where that came from, but Nidavar has been struggling. Carlo's pulling it back. Pesci not bad, and Geo is God. And uh, Demko, uh, I I may resign him. Honestly, it kind of depends where uh, Grice is at overall at the end of the season and where Demko is, because I want Demko being the starter next season. I don't want to sign Grice if Grice has a higher overall than Demko, because then the coach is going to make Christ the starter. So yeah. That is my reasoning. But Thatcher Demko. I'm going to kind of date this video right now. But last night was a Vancouver Vegas playoff game. Game 5. Uh, Vegas had the chance to eliminate Vancouver. And Thatcher Demko goes in net. First ever playoff game. The dude. The dude makes a. What? 46, or no, I think it was 42 saves on 43 shots. Vegas only got 17, or uh, Vancouver only got 17 shots. Vegas got like 43. Vancouver won 2-1. to one. Demko committed highway robbery that should be illegal in the continental United States. That was mean. <laughs> To say the least, Jacob Larson's back, Limblom back, and Jared McCann. Nice to see. Yeah, that should be highway robbery. <laughs> like, the dude played out of his mind, so I'm really hoping he plays like this in the game. Um, I have abs. I think it was Tiffles. Was it? Who's in, uh... What the fuck are these? Okay, maybe I should have edited these lines. These lines are weird. Alright, we're going to take a Crammerer and put in Nick Paul. The Paul man. I won't say that again. <laughs> I don't know what I'm on, guys. I don't know. Alright. I lose to San Jose. And we lose to Anaheim. Okay, boys, let's not do this. Garnet Hathaway has gotten a mob concussion. Stefan Nason 
is going to get his first stint with the team. Kind of. Actually, no, not kind of. I think this, yeah, this is his first game with us. So, yeah. Good to see how he is. It is a depth option. I could put in Steen, but let's see what Nason does. Let's see what Nason does. OT win in Calgary. Win in Ottawa. Nice. And we have jumped up to second. This division's weird. Oh, yeah. But last episode, I was talking about the trade deadline. Who I kind of wanted to trade. And I was bringing up Carl Gunnarsson and St. Louis. But I got a lot of defensive defensemen. So uh, I kind of don't want to bring in another. If Unless if I was making a lateral move moving out of defensive defenseman to bring one in, but that wouldn't make too much sense to me. So, a trade for a defensive defenseman really just doesn't pique my forte. Uh, Michael Stone is interesting as a depth option. Yeah, there is Gardner and Votnin. Votnin is someone I would actually be interested in bringing in in free agency. Uh, uh, he could be a good asset. Huh. Oh, also, I realized this guy that Colorado drafted, uh, the medium league guy, his name's Valerie Nishushkin. You know, like the right winger. Valerie Nishushkin. Yep. I love this game. I, I I don't care what anyone says. I love its name generation sometimes because it can be dumb. I I once found I think it was on NHL seventeen. Yeah. Uh, there was a player named Oh fuck, what was his first name? But it was something Kunitz, and he was Neil Kunitz. Neil Kunitz out of North Korea. Most North Korean man I've ever seen. Neil Kunitz. I I just love it. I absolutely adore it. Ben Hutton fits on that third pairing. Ben Hutton's an interesting option. If I were to bring him in, I'd probably make him offensive defenseman. He's Ben Hutton in real life. He he's he's good offensively. Uh, but once you play him a little too much, he can become less effective. Brad Hunt still piques my interest a little bit, but probably more of an off-season off option. Going to Montreal. I might just roll through this trade deadline and say whatever happens, happens in playoffs. You know what? I drafted this team, and I have faith in it. I'll make changes when needed in the offseason. Uh, yeah, I'm not bringing in Delzaster. No, no, no. Oh, no, no. Why would I do that? That is, that is madness. Huh. But yeah, uh, Gunnarsson, I'm not going to bring in Scandella in free agency. I will keep my eye on. I will definitely keep my eye on. Has St. Louis offered Petrangelo an extension? No, Petrangelo is probably leaving them. And thankfully, yeah, I got the first. Thanks, St. Louis. If I can get a lottery pick, thanks to St. Louis, that would be, that would be hilarious. Or if I can just get a top five pick. Doesn't have to be lottery. Top five pick is pretty cool. Cool. Yeah, it doesn't really look like anyone too big. Play hey Nola. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. After skimming through her again, I'm just going to run with the team that I have. I'm happy with this team. And I don't feel like I need to make changes. So, let's take her deadline day. Let's skim through that bad boy. And get through the rest of the season as Ben Hutton in a fourth. Go to Edmonton for Oliver Rod or Olivier Rodrigue. I think it's Olivier. Yeah. It's not Oliver, because there's an I before the E-R. Uh, Olivier. I think it's Olivier. Olivier, Roderick, a third, fourth, and a sixth. Okay, LA stacking on later picks. Interesting. Garna Hathaway's all healthy. Nice to see. 
Uh, Stefan Nason got his first goal in his first game. Plus one. Cool. I know the Penguins signed the season. I think he did exactly just that. Jesus Christ, Nick Bonino. Yeah, I think he scored his first and well, not first NHL goal. The dude's been in the NHL, but he scored his uh, first goal with the Penguins in his debut game, like immediately. I thought that was hilarious. First line doesn't really produce as much as I would like. Hard switch Connolly. Uh, that, that one. First line doesn't produce as much as I would like. Hmm. Nidavar, you're really having your struggles. I'm going to move Nidavar down and give Carrick more time. Carrick's playing really well. Price 909. Demko with a 920. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to see what I'm going to do with the backup option this offseason. I would like to keep Grice, but something tells me that Grice will still be the over high, higher overall goaltender, and I don't want him being the starter. I I want that to go to Demko. Yeah, Demko's playing great as we drop 6-1 to one to Edmonton, but oh my, a big move goes on. Rasmus Sandin, Nick... Robertson, who, by the way, did you know he's 18? Blast my nuts off to know that. And a computer-generated prospect, centerman, Semen, for Alex Petrangelo and J. Bo Meester. So immediately, that blue line went from a weakness to a strength in Toronto. Oh my god, that's a big move. Toronto keep him, though. That's interesting. Toronto got him. That is interesting. We are sitting in the first wild card spot. That is pretty nice. Uh, so yeah. What's our clearance right now? It's like, yeah, we got good clearance. I know the coyote. Well, the Coyotes would jump into their own division before they would jump into the playoffs. So we have good clearance. So we we should be a clinch. Keyword should. Geo hasn't had a point in a while. That's not cool. That is not cool at all. I'll give the trade block one last look. Sometimes it does change and it's like a massive change. So, I'll give her one last look. But, yeah. That was a big move in Toronto. As Scandella is now in Calgary. Now they want to flip them. Okay. Good job, Calgary. You're re you're really thinking, thinking the important thoughts. Apparently, let's just. Yeah. Good job. Uh, yeah, it's looking pretty much. Oh no, Florida. Bad enough, Paula. Uh, Boyle, first line, Sam Gagne, Isik, oh, you're, you're struggling, Franz Nielsen, Matt Irwin, okay, Florida, Chase Brisky. okay, so yeah, Florida's doing a little bit of a sale themselves too for their uh, UFAs. Uh, I always get Tom Kunackle. I love you, Tom Kunackle. I don't know why. I just do. Now, he was a former Penguin. You ever just have that in sports in general? You know, yeah, leave a comment down below. A, just a player you just randomly like. Like, yeah, maybe they were on your team, but they didn't do much. But you just like them for some strange reason. Austin Watson. It's a very interesting fella to bring in. And he has that extension in real life. That is very interesting. Okay, I'll remember that. Austin Watson, if I ever wanted to make a change to the grind line. I will I will keep that in mind. Yeah, not looking at anyone here in the Islanders. 
Troy Brower. Same with Matt Martin. Two players also. I can keep my eye on for that grind line. Uh, still the same in New York. How does Ryan Strom fit? It's actually playing really well. It's third line though. It's third line. Ottawa. There's Ron Hainsey. How are you still doing? Oh, oh, oh negative 46 now. Doing excellent, Ron Hainsey. I wouldn't expect anything better. Oh, God. St. Louis is now selling Braden Shen and Ryland O'Reilly, who's playing like dumpster fire. Oh, my God. God! 26 points! You are on pace to have, like, not even 40 points. You haven't done that at any point in your career. Oh my god! That's... That's vile. I swear, St. Louis in this game never sims well. A lot of their team just don't, don't sim well how it goes. It really do be like that sometimes. Lilligren is on the ball. <laughs> Toronto, please keep one of your prospect defensemen. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. William Carrier is getting sold in Vegas. And yeah, really, no, no one I'm too interested in. I could go get Sam Carrick in Anaheim, but I think, I feel like is he a brother of Connor? I feel like he is. I don't feel like Carrick is too common of a name, but then again, we have two Sebastian Ajos in the NHL, and they're not even from the same country. So yeah. That was a funny stat line a couple of years ago. <laughs> when the Sebastian Ajo, the main one, that is the centerman in Carolina who's really good. Like, the dude, the stud. And then the other Sebastian Ajo is a defenseman for the Islanders, who's like, yeah, he's a fringe NHLer. You'll see him every now and then. But the dude's not, like, a star or anything. But during a game between the Islanders and Hurricanes, Sebastian Ajo, the Hurricanes one, tripped the other Sebastian Ajo. So Ajo went to the box for tripping Ajo. I love it. I love it to say the very least. It's it's silly. It's dumb and I love it. So we seem to be having a little bit of our struggles. We could like go into playoffs on a nice winning streak. Yeah. Dylan Bluyas gets injured down in Madison. And uh, that's a problem because... We ain't got more any more defensemen, Lieutenant Dan. We ain't got any more. Okay, boy. Let's finish the season off strong. Strong, boy. Shoot out one against the Red Wings. Win against Florida. And we jump up from that second wild card. Shoot out loss to Nashville. We lose 5 0 to Chicago. And then 9 to 5 to Pittsburgh. Oh my god. God, who is in net for that? Probably both of them, but... So, uh, from what I'm getting from this, I should have never paused the sim. I will actually be going into the Pacific. Okay. Strange. Alright, let's sim a day and then look at these stats. So yeah, we finished in that second wild card. Oh my god, we were we were about to miss. Thanks to those back-to-back -back losses. Nash we gave Nashville hope. Dear God, guys, come on. You're not playing well. Yeah, this that every, I feel like when I started this sim, we just haven't been playing well since. Yeah, two losses. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, we pretty much played 500 hockey ever since I started simming again. 
A 500 hockey is something you should not play until like the middle of March. Not in the middle of February when you're in the second wild card spot. You don't play 500 hockey then. But that's just me. President's Trophy winner goes to the aforementioned Penguins who absolutely slaughtered us. Even though we scored five on them, but it didn't matter. Oilers win the West. God, I wish that both of those happened in real life because then both of them would be playing playoff hockey. But sadly, Tate and Jack Johnson said otherwise. Alrighty. Leading the way for the Milwaukee Dreadnoughts is good old Mark Giordano, our defenseman. With 67 points. Amazing season. Yanni Gore was 63. So. We do not have a lot of scoring. Which I, I understand. Because my coach. The coach of the team. It coaches a more defensive style. So. I'm not going to. Nick Bonino had 54 points. I'm sorry to interrupt myself. But that's a bit much. For Nick Bonino. Yeah, our coach coach is more of a defensive style team, so I wasn't expecting, you know, three players to be points per game. But I do wish a little bit more offense. We can, 52 points, but a minus five. Andreas Janssen, 51 points, but a minus nine. The first line has had its struggles defensively. Eric Stahl played well, commanding that second line. Lindblom with 48 points. Points. Him and Benino played really well together, and something tells me Benino won't repeat that. <laughs> something tells me. Brett Connolly sadly just misses out on a 20 goal season, but hits 45 points. Lawson Kraus, 38. Stan Skoy, 38. Stefan Johns hits 31, which is probably a career high for him. I would assume, yeah, the highest you have got has been 15. Yeah. Hathaway with 29. Uh, only 10 penalty minutes. Good job, Hathaway. Staying out of the box. This 10 better be two fights. I will accept nothing else. Yeah, sadly, you guys aren't the hit kings. Unfortunately. Nidavaru was a minus 12, still. Carrick, uh, 23 points, along with Pesci. Dracar minus six. So, eh, compared to Vegas, nowhere near as good as an expansion here. Uh, Thomas Grice finishes with 32 wins and a 904 save percentage. And more to be desired. Demko with a nice 915 save percentage. Or, yeah, 915 save percentage in 24 games. Hopefully, Demko will be ready to command the starters, Grace. Next. Season. Do we have any rookies? No. I don't think we did. Alright, let's look throughout the league. Actually, I can go up. That's faster. I'm too used to the Penguins. We're going down as faster. In the entire league, Mark Shifley led the way with 108 points. He was an assist per game. Yeah, I wonder who Patrick Line was playing with. And same with Blake Wheeler. So, assuming... That is Winnipeg's top line. Because it probably is. Yeah, they are within the top six. I'm assuming Line A. Yeah, Line A gets the rocket with 56 goals. Assist King Shifley. Shifley. Backstrom also played really well. Uh, yeah, is this good? Yep, Shifley. Plus minus goes to Shifley. And. The moment you've all been waiting for. Who won the Masters this year in the NHL? Oh, Ron Hainsey with a Masters win and a commanding lead over his teammate, Hot Sam Bacho. Minus 54. Impressive. The only minute King goes to what a shocker. Mark Borowicki beat some heads in. First McDermott. Also, Michael Haley is up here. So, well, actually, well, oh my god, the drop-off. 
Toad McDermott and Borowicki were just hammering on everyone. Oven Chicken led with the most shots. Pacioretty close behind, and McKinnon the only other one to hit 300. Uh, shooting percentage per 82 or full season. Uh, Darren Helm, uh, Patrick Line, yeah, makes sense. Dude have 56 of them. Makes sense. Jack Eichel uh, led the way along with Cody Glass and Patrick Kane for game-winning goals, that being nine. Power play goals go to Adam Henry, Tyler Sagan, Philip Forsberg, and James Van Reebsdyke, all with six. Very interesting players. Sagan makes sense because this game makes him, like, basically God. It didn't this season, only 68 points, but Henry Forsberg and Van Reebsdyke are other strange ones. Power play points goes to Tyler Sagan. Short-handed goals. That goes to Brad Marchand and Michael Backlund, each with two short-handed points. A lot of players with two. Ice time per game. Seth Jones was the workhorse on the blue line, and it makes sense because this guy is God sometimes. Oh, my God. He's excellent defensively. And, yeah, he had the most minutes. Yeah, Seth Jones. Pretty good. Pretty good. You know, he was a minus five this season. Anze Kopitar won the most faceoffs, and yeah, he had the leading save percentage. So, uh, Kopitar for the uh, Selkie? Potentially. The Hit King goes to the Rat King himself, Brad Marchand. Uh, sadly, we are not up there. That makes me angry. Ah, uh, block shots go to Jacob Slavin, throws the body in front a lot. Ron Hainsey's number four. Which, with his minus 54, that really makes you think, this dude blocked 139 shots and still had the worst plus minus in the league by far. How bad was Ottawa? <laughs> that is the real question. Oh, man. Giveaways. That goes to Vladislav Gavrikov with a perfect 100. Good job, buddy. Takeaway King, that goes to Cam Atkinson. Okay, Cam Atkinson. Fight King, yep, Mark, Bork, Mark, eh, Mark Borowicki and Curtis McDermott beat each other's heads in. Same with Michael Haley. Uh, Ronaldo got in there a little bit. Big rig as well. But, yeah, that's it for uh, the full league. Defenseman, who's our Norris winner, probably going to be John Carlson. John Carlson with a 72-point campaign, but Geo, Geo was up there. So if he didn't have that long streak where he was pointless, maybe we could be talking about how Geo won the Norris. Maybe. Goaltenders. Devin Dubnik led the way with 41 wins among goalies. Save percentage leaders for starters. That goes to Pekka Rene with a 925 save percentage. But right behind him, Carter Hart, who uh, ended up playing, yeah, what is that, 12 more games, had a 919. Very interesting. I would, you could argue, you could argue both of them. Because Rene played amazing when he did. And Carter Hart, he just played more. But he also played amazing. So yeah, I would probably maybe give it to Rene. I think it's Rene's award to lose. Thomas Grice was near the lower end. Yeah, it's probably going to be his only campaign with us. Yeah, his goals against average was uh, yeah, not not too bad. Hey, you just I don't know. Uh, maybe the defense just wasn't too great in front of you. That could have been it. Rocky Skaters, who's going to win the Calder? That goes to Dominic Kubalik with a 54-point campaign. But Quinn Hughes could have an outside chance. 51 points for a defenseman. Capucacco hits 50 as a forward. And there is a Thursumbayev. Thursumbayev. Yeah. That sounds Russian, Ilya. I wonder if they were playing together. Gubalik and uh, Ivan. 
rookie goalies. Uh, Blackwood was the only one to play any major games. Started from New Jersey, 905. Dude got shelled. But yeah, that is this team. The uh, stats for the league. This what the team stats and the league stats for the 2019-2020 campaign. And we will be playing the winners of the West, the Edmonton Oilers, in the playoffs. Tune in next episode to hopefully watch us not get our heads beaten by these Oilers. I will see you all next time. And stay cute out there, my comrades.